I just stand here beside it and it'll be okay? No, I can, I can pick you up right now. Pick me up on the way home. Good morning. We welcome you to Kenansville Baptist Church video worship service. We pray that this blesses you, helps keep you informed, and is a worshipful time for you as we miss getting together with you during these unprecedented times. Here's a few announcements for this week. Pastor Ray is following the governor's order to stay at home, so he is not with us. So we are all that are here are gonna do the very best we can to make this a great time. The sanctuary, just so you know, will be open every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. if you would like to come and spend some time here as you're missing the, the congregation, but also a place for you to pray at the altar um, or just spend some quiet time reflecting. So you know the sanctuary is being wiped down and disinfected daily. There's still a few youth fundraisers going on, even though there's not much else. Um, the first one is the petunia sale. Please call or send us your orders to help with the youth mission trip this summer that we pray still goes on. The order deadline for petunias is Sunday, April 5th, which is next Sunday. If you need a copy of the order form, I know you can't see this, but call the church office. We'll be glad to send you an order form or we can just take your order over the phone. You may even look back if you have at home an old bulletin and there's probably an order form in there. Also, the youth are still selling slightly used CDs for $2. Again, just call the church office and we can get you a list of what's available um, and take your order and pull your CDs for you and, and hold them for you or get them to you somehow. The CDs will be sold on a first come, first serve basis. Youth and parents, we need a firm number of who is going on the Deep Impact Mission Trip tomorrow. So if you haven't contacted myself or the church office to let us know that you are locked in, please let me know by tomorrow. With the governor's stay-at-home order, the deacons will not be meeting tomorrow night. Bert will be contacting all of the deacons through email or text to determine what activities will take place later in March. But for now, we know that there's nothing gonna be happening for the next couple weeks because of the governor's order. For now, though, we will continue to send emails and try to do some type of video like we're gonna do today for Sunday's worship. Please note that this could change at any time if the governor makes changes to his orders and policies. Again, check your email for any information that we can get to you. And if you're not receiving these emails, call the church office. Ray and Gail and myself are putting together a lot of information and sending it out daily. So please make sure you stay in touch this way um, to get the updates um, with everything that's going on. And Ray is also putting together some daily devotions, like I mentioned, and you wanna make sure that you can get those and stay in God's word. Um, Ray's putting together, a he's calling it a kit, keeping in touch, and he's working with everybody to keep us all in touch and in the word. Um, so if you cannot get email, then we'll be glad to, or if you hear of somebody that can't get email, then we'll be glad to mail copies or get them to you somehow. And please hear this. In all of this, if you need any help at all, do not hesitate to call the church office, one of your deacons, or anything at all, for prayer, for driving assistance, if you need groceries or medicines and you just don't wanna get out of the house, or if you just need to talk, please give us a call. We are all here for you. Prayer concerns for today are please keep in prayer for all the doctors and nurses that are on the front lines, for our government leaders, for our business leaders, and for everyone making the decisions to get through this time. Please pray for those with this disease throughout the world and other illnesses. Pray for quick recovery and for healing for all. Stay in prayer for our pastor search team. And we also ask you to pray for Mr. Bob Swain and Rose.
Bob is still scheduled for his surgery at Duke on Tuesday the 31st, which is this Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we'll now have our call to worship this morning, and we'll be singing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And some of you may have a contraband hymnal at home, so if you do, you can pull it out and follow along with us. Or even if you don't, you know the words. It's on page 411. pray. Father, thank you that you promised to always be with us, Lord, and, and we know that you're with us now, Lord. Sometimes we have a tendency to forget that and maybe panic a little, but help us to know, Lord, that you are in the midst of all of this. Lord, that is your promise, not that you'll keep the anxiety or stress that we feel at times away, but that you will get us through it. Lord, I pray for everybody that's out there that are feeling a little unsure. Lord, give them assurance, blessed assurance, Lord. Be with those among our church family, Lord, that need help. Lord, give them the gumption to reach out and ask for help. Lord, may no one feel alone at this time. Father, we say a special prayer for Bob as he undergoes his surgery this week, Lord. We lift him up to you, Rose, all that will be in contact with him, Lord, and just ask you to help him to get on the other side of this cancer. Lord, again, pray for this service. We pray for everybody on the other side of the video, Lord, that you keep them healthy and safe, give them wisdom, and give them, again, your assurance. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for Jesus Christ, and we lift this prayer in his holy name. Amen. Good morning. It's a little bit different doing a children's sermon without any children down in front of me, but I'm going to try to tell you something today and, and maybe help you better understand what we're going to be talking about. Um, today we're going to hear a story about a time when the disciples were very afraid and they had to learn to trust in God and not to worry about what was going on. Worry means uh, that we are afraid or we're concerned because we don't know what's going to happen. And so today I've got my worry jar here and it's got a little something in the bottom just to remind us what worry is. My other jar is my trusting God jar. And we have to remember that God is in control of everything that happens. He knows everything, and he doesn't want us to be afraid. 
because he's taking care of us. Now, do you think that you can put trust in God and worry, that we can mix them all together and that that would be something that would, would uh, fully mix together and work? So we're going to test it out and see. If I pour my worry and my trust together, well, it looks like they're mixing up really well. It looks like we can have both. Oh, it doesn't. Look how they're separating out. Trusting God's on the bottom and the worry's coming up to the top. We can't fully trust God and worry at the same time. When Rachel comes up to read the scripture, she's going to tell you a part of what Jesus said to his disciples when they were not trusting him. He says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? There's a lot that's going on right now. There's um, the virus and there's no school and lots of things that can make us afraid and can make us worry. But what we have to remember is worry and trust don't mix. God really wants us to trust in him. Let's pray. God, we just thank you that you are always with us and that we can trust in you no matter what. We pray that you'll keep us safe and that you'll help us to remember to put our trust and faith in you. Amen. Today we're going to pray for one of our missionaries. We will call him John, but that is really not his name. You see the news, like I do, and you know that even in North America, sharing Jesus with some people is simply dangerous. John is planting a new church among tens of thousands of Chinese people who have come here to live in North America. They speak Mandarin Chinese. The new church is the first church for Mandarin speakers in the city. They come from a country that insists on atheism and opposes the Christian faith sometimes with violence, so John's ministry is dangerous, but it's also rewarding. He tells of sharing the gospel with a couple, and they committed their lives to Jesus Christ. They both wept when they realized what Jesus had done for them. Even though we do not know John's real name or even where he is serving, our church is supporting him through the cooperative program giving. Remember that we do not give to the cooperative program because it is just a channel. Our mission dollars go through the cooperative program to missionaries like John who are kingdom workers. Let us pray. Our Father, we just thank you for all the missionaries that bring your word to them, Father. Um, Father, we just thank you for John and, and what, is, what he is doing with the Mandarin-speaking people. Um, Father, we just pray for his safety and we pray that uh, through him uh, that, that your word will be delivered and that, that he will bring many people to you, Father. Thank you for all that you do and all that you are. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen.
If you will turn in your Bibles to Mark 4, 35 through 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. The waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. As we go through this season together, we must remember that we serve a God that controls the wind and the waves. And we serve a God whose name controls sickness. The Lord fights for us. We just need to be still and trust him. Let us pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for this day, this beautiful day that you've given us to worship and glorify you, Lord. And I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word and for you to give us this blessed assurance that you are with us and that you control everything. You control sickness. You control this virus. You are with us through all of this in the midst. And please help us just be still and lean on you and trust and obey you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we had mentioned earlier, Pastor Ray is staying at home, sheltering in place in Wilmington and couldn't be with us today. So instead of preaching, we're going to have this roundtable discussion talking about the scripture of Mark 4, 31, 35 through 41. So we're going to ask a few questions and just kind of bounce it around and try to reassure you all and ourselves as well through the word of God. So the first question is, what do you think um, about Jesus telling his disciples to get in the boats to head over to the other side? And do you think he knew the storm was coming? And if he did, why did he lead them into the storm? I think that um, Jesus did know the storm was coming. I, th I think that Jesus knows everything. Um, I think we back up to, to the day that... Um, that Jesus had it says in that day and in that day um, Jesus had taught lots of parables there had been healings and so there was a crowd that had gathered and he wanted to take his disciples to the other side um, and I don't think that it was about going to the other side I think it was about the journey to get there and I relate to that in many ways with where we are today. We are in, in the midst of something. We want to get out of it, but we are on a journey. I agree. I think they did. Jesus did know what was going to happen. The disciples didn't, but Jesus did. And he knew that the disciples were at a point where they needed to learn to trust him through storms and through life and everything that was going to happen because they were going to have a lot more storms that were going to come about. So it was a, a time for him to teach them about trust. Right, and I agree as well. I think he knew that the storm was coming. He didn't take the storm away. Storms were very popular, um, popular, happened a lot in, on the Sea of Galilee, the, with the way the, the mountains and the sea has come through the valley. Um, so they happened often. But, yeah, Jesus didn't calm the storm from the beginning. Um, but what do you think about, and, and what makes you do what about Jesus saying, the disciples saying to Jesus, well, don't, don't you care about us? Do you think that um, the disciples were wrong in asking Jesus if he cared about them? I, 
I think Jesus very much cared about them, but, but this was a strange thing for them. They, they expected a lot more from him. You know, he was the Messiah, the king. He was coming to save them on a white horse, and, and here he was putting them in the storm where they might die. So, yeah, there was some concern from them, for sure. Yeah, I think that um, Jesus cared about them, um, it, but I think that this was a time where maybe the disciples lost a little trust, um, very much like when we're going through our storms. Um, sometimes I know that, that we question, and it's, uh, as we find out through the, scripture, the scripture that um, things do really, really turn out at, in the end, but um, through that storm, um, we learn a lot. Mm, yeah, and, and just like our storm now, you know, Jesus, the word never promises to take all of our storms away. Jesus and God promise that they'll just be with us through the storm. Um, and the disciples saying, don't you care if we drown? Aren't we maybe now sometimes asking that through this storm? And also, they were probably wondering how in the world he could sleep through this violent storm on the water. And just, I think we need to rest assured that uh, God is, the human side of Jesus was asleep, but the God of this universe, of this all of creation, is not asleep. How do you think the disciples woke Jesus? And how do you think that they were really feeling when they, when they awakened him? I think that the disciples were frantic. I think they were scared. And I, I think it's good to remember that these were seasoned fishermen, that they were used to the water. And Jesus was calm. And Jesus was a carpenter. So, um, but they were scared. They, they were really scared for their, their lives. Yeah, they had to be frantic, and they had to be looking at one another and going, how can he sleep? Why can he just lay there like that? Doesn't he know what's going on around us? You know, that I'm sure that was a very frantic, wake up, wake up, look, we're going to drown. you got to help kind of thing. Yeah, their words were, yeah, don't you care if we drown? And of course he did. does. God always does. I think it was a way for them to stretch and grow their faith, just like this time is and can be for us if we put our hope and faith in the word and in the Lord. What tone of voice do you think the disciples used when asking Jesus if he cared? Well, I guess we've I, already I answered guess, that. I, I, frantic, to me, yeah. it was a frantic, I'm a, don't you know? Yeah. Um, sorry, I meant to ask, what tone of voice do you think Jesus used when he rebuked the wind in comparison to the disciples? I think that Jesus was in control, and um, he spoke as if he were in command. And I th it, for me, it was a time when the disciples realized that, hey, this is more than a healer. This is more than what, I mean, this is God himself. It, it separated him somewhat in that he was over the heavens and the earth. Yeah, I think it was with a great authority that he spoke so that there was no doubt that he was in charge and in control of what was going on. Yeah, and, and I mean, we mentioned already that he's, he's fully human and he's fully God at the same time, and he knew what he was doing. He might have been the only one at the time, just like he may sometimes be the only one at this time what he's doing for us. So his words were quiet to be still. Now, he spoke that to the wind, but I think he's also speaking that to us today, just like he was probably even saying that not just to the wind, but to the disciples and the others in the boats. What tone in comparison then do you think he used when he questioned the disciples' faith? I think that had to be a very loving tone and, and a very, don't you see, don't you know why why are you so afraid i've been with you all this time you've seen me you've seen what i've done you know who i am you're my followers so where where is your faith but it was with a loving kind of rebuke i think and i think that it was the same i also think that it was trust me as we go forward and we teach you have to trust that that i am god and i am over everything 
So um, I would agree that it was very loving. Yeah, I agree. I think that he may have been a little like, come on, guys, don't you get it yet? I've performed all these miracles you've seen. I've chased demons out of people. Maybe this was the first miracle. I should have looked this up. I don't know for sure where he calmed nature and showed his authority over nature. But it was maybe a little frustrated, too. It's like, when when are you guys going to get it? And those of us living on this side of the cross, we get it because we've seen Jesus's death and resurrection they hadn't seen that at at that time so but we have so not that we still aren't going to go through the storm and sometimes show lack of faith as in this scripture but we need to remember that Jesus has authority over everything everyone and everything and he will um, carry this through what thoughts do you think may have been going through Jesus's mind about just the happenings um, you know do you think that let me let me rephrase this um, well let me just go on to the next question because I think we've already even answered this question have you ever observed someone going through um, this feeling of, of sinking or going under or stuck in the midst of a of a life's storm and maybe you have or you know someone that you would be willing to share Well, I mean, I think personally, um, I've been through storms, um, and I think that at, at this age, I've probably been through several storms, some more so than others, and, uh, you know, it, the, the thing that does help me is, um, you know, digging into the Bible during those, those times. Um, I think sometimes going through those storms, we act like the, the disciples, I mean, you know, God, where are you? I need you now. We want the answer. And it really is in God's time. And I think taking us through that journey and um, going through those difficult times is his chance to mold us and um, allow us to dig into the Bible. There will be an answer, but it is in, we have to remember it is in God's time and we, we have to be patient. I think as a group, as a country, we go through those same storms. Yeah, it, you know, it's not just um, a destination that we're headed to. It's a journey. It's a real journey. And if we were always on the mountaintops and everything was always great, when would we learn to trust God and to put our faith in him? So he has to take us through some of these hardships or these storms in lives so that we can learn to trust in him and to rely on him and to dig into his word. Um, it, it just, it, it wouldn't work if we didn't have to do some of that, even though it's not pleasant, <laughs> you know. Right, it's not. I'm sure it wasn't pleasant for the, no. all in the boats on the Sea of Galilee. Um, and the other thing that happens sometimes is we have storms on top of storms. We've mentioned uh, many on the prayer request. So they're going through um, possibly illness and the storm of the virus. Uh, so it's, it's such an uncertain time now but I think Jesus is, one of Jesus' main points is faith over fear. And we need to remember to, to just trust in him. And one way or another, this side or the other side of glory, he will, he will um, deliver us. I think we need to be smart. But um, I think faith over fear and deliverance is part of the main point of this scripture as well. He's not going to take the, the storms away, but he will help us get through them. Um, what do you think that what do you think we should or could be doing to help others get through the storms in our midst in this world now? I think first and foremost we need to be in prayer and in constant communication with God and in trusting in Him. But we also need to be following the guidelines that have been set out for us as we're trying to do today, keeping our distance and having a small group. Um, And we need to be checking on on those in our congregation and in our neighborhoods and around, maybe the elderly that may need us to do something for them. Or, um, you know, there's groups making masks for the hospital if they should happen to run out. And there's uh, maybe you just need to pick up the phone and call somebody and talk to them. They're lonely. They're in their home. They're quarantined. And we need to kind of be looking out for those kinds of things in the ways that we can do that. I would agree with Kathy. I, I, I can't say it any better than that. Um, you know, and I think about 
to some of the um, young adults that are home with their children and um, the challenge that that is, that is a new challenge for them and, and you know, just be in prayer for them and, and add ideas. Um, I'm sure that there are lots of people that have come up with many different ideas. They need to share those with, with one another of how to, to, you know, deal with this new normal. All right. Let me say one more thing, too. Talking with Rachel a little bit ago, she talked about how unusual this is for, for that age group, for high schoolers who, she said, I've never been through a whole year of, of high school because last year we had the hurricane and we're out for so long and now we're out for this. So, you know, we need to be encouraging them as well. Right. Um, I, it, we're, we're all going through this new normal. I was telling my husband this morning about last year when I graduated from divinity school, I was so sad because we had to have divinity graduation in our chapel, which only held a certain number of people. I couldn't even invite my whole family to my graduation. Well, this year they may not even have a graduation. So, you know, my heart goes out for them. But I, just like you all said, you know, we need to be wise. We need to follow the guidelines that our government is putting in place, that's scriptural, to listen to our authorities. We need to pray. Stay in God's word. Um, he's giving those of you that are at home with your children, try to, you and your children, try to stay in God's word. There's, this is the best assurance and reassurance that we can have. Um, and, and, and just practice and use the wisdom that God gives us and be in prayer and then be available. Be available to help family members, be available to help friends. And remember, we're all going through this together. The whole world is going through this. And, um, but we have a great big God and he is saying to us right now, quiet, be still. He is forcing us to be stuck maybe at home, but take advantage of it. Take time to enjoy it. And then just one last question. Do you all have any other scripture passages specifically that you turn to, to uh, in, in times of maybe stress and anxiety in times like this when we need to trust God? I have a couple. Um, one I learned in teaching children's Sunday school. It was a memory verse one time, and I thought it was just the greatest verse. And it's Psalm 56.3 that says, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. And that's something you can just kind of repeat over and over again when things are scary and going on. The other one is uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's pretty much the way it is right now. We, we don't have a lot of understanding about why we're going through things, but we know we cannot be anxious and we can trust him and talk to him about it. Like Kathy, um, mine is uh, one that we used in Sunday school also last month. Um, we went over this verse, and it's been a special verse for me throughout my childhood and, and also as an adult, and it is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and that is many, I'm sure that's a verse that many people um, use, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on not your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight and then the other one which is throughout the bible um, but i am choosing um, joshua 1 1 9 be strong and courageous do not be terrified for the lord your god is with you that's great you took two of my favorites right there too <laughs> ken um and the cool thing about psalms and even proverbs at times they have such a, a beat to them and a metric to them once you get into them they're E at least a verse is very easy to memorize, so I encourage you to memorize and tuck those scriptures in your heart. Another one of my favorites, though, um, and I'll read it, is Romans 8, 38, and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor any, anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and he is Lord. So this has been our moment of talking together since Ray is um, sheltering in place. We hope that this has been a blessing to you and maybe got your creative juices thinking. Um, if you want to talk, I know the three and even six or eight of us that are here today would be willing to talk. So give us a call at the church office or um, give a friend a call that knows Jesus. Be blessed. that one.
wonderful. We're now going to close this morning singing the doxology, which is a song that I believe you probably all know and uh, can join with us from home. Praise God from whom all... Oh, we're going to start that again. Our benediction comes from Numbers 6, 22 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. It is most important to us that you know Jesus. If you don't, contact this church or a local church, so that we can share God's love, his mercy, and his grace. Thank you.